Thank you. And how fabulous that so many are here today. Thank you very much uh, for joining the session. Now, I'm sure all the technology works. Brilliant. Can I check before I go any further? Actually, we've got some people standing there. Could you stick your hand up if, if you've got a seat empty next to you? If you ladies want to? OK, maybe not. So, <laughs> it was worth a try. Can I check that everybody can read that? Excellent, because if you can read it, it means that I don't need to. So um, a little, I'm going to talk a little bit about the charity, a little bit about Group B Strep, quite a lot about the updated uh, Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists guidelines. Um, I should fit into time, and on, um, uh, we should also be able to have a few minutes for questions at the end. So um, Group B Strep support uh, was set up, my husband and I set it up in 1996, with the overarching objective of preventing uh, group B strep infection in babies. Uh, what we do is, then and now, is we provide information to health professionals, information to pregnant women particularly, and also information to uh, affected families. And we push for improvements to prevention and treatment strategies in the UK. We are completely independent, um, and we are supported by an eminent uh, medical advisory panel who review all of our printed information materials before uh, they are published. So we can be confident that the information that we're providing is good quality, um, evidence-based, and hopefully fairly uh, um, legible as well. So Group B Strep. Uh, group B strep is a very common bacterium. It lives in approximately 25% of adults in the UK. Its home is the intestines in women. Uh, um, because of the close proximity between the vagina and the rectum, it's often found in the vagina, and it's perfectly normal there. doesn't cause symptoms and usually um, uh, and, and doesn't need treatment. Carriage itself can come and go. It's not a case of once a carrier, always a carrier. Um, research has shown that carriage tends to change over periods of months and years. It's not like the number 27 bus that's coming every hour or so. Um, so carriage, uh, carriage periods will be uh, of months and years uh, rather than days and weeks. Group B strep is a significant cause of severe infection. Um, in adults, it most typically causes infection in the elderly uh, and, uh, and women around pregnancy, and also in other adults who have uh, immune issues. Uh, it also causes infection in babies, and that's where most of these infections uh, develop. Group B strep is universally recognized as being the most common cause of severe infection in babies. Uh, it's also the most common cause of meningitis in babies under three months. Um, even with prevention, in the UK and the Republic of Ireland, approximately two babies every day develop a group B strep infection. One baby every week dies from their group B strep infection, and one baby a, a week recovers with long-term disability. The infections in newborn babies, as you can see from this graph, um, present most typically day one. So that big, um, is it orange? was orange and when it was in my slide. Anyway, um, the, the big bar shows that the, most of these in, infections show signs within the first day of life, and the infections become increasingly uncommon so that by the time a baby is three months old, these infections are very rare indeed. Group B strep infections are normally described as either of early onset or of late onset, uh, which is pretty much as it says on the tin. Um, early onset infections present in the first six days of life and late onset between age 7 and 90 days. And as I said, those infections, uh, group B strep infections in babies older than that are, are significantly rarer. Early onset infection normally presents as sepsis and pneumonia. Um, 
and even with good medical care, sadly around 1 in 20 of these sick babies will die, uh, and around about 1 in 14 of the survivors will have long-term sequelae. And it's the early onset group B strep infections that are mostly preventable. <coughs> so early onset infections presenting with signs typically in the first day, but also up to day six of life. Um, these are the key signs to be alert for. Often these infections uh, will present in, while baby is still in hospital. Uh, and as midwives, it's so important to, to know what signs to look for. And as you can see, that some of these signs uh, can easily be mistaken for other things. So it's also about looking at it as a picture and considering, could it be group B strep? And if it is, clearly escalate. Late onset group B strep infection is slightly different. Obviously, the timing's slightly different. Um, and um, late onset group B strep infections typically present as meningitis and or sepsis. Again, even with really good care, about 1 in 12 of these sick babies will die, and 1 in 8 will survive with disability. Where meningitis is present, um, the, uh, um, there's a much higher rate of long-term disability in surviving babies. It's around 50%. With late onset group B strep infection, at the moment we have no um, prevention, so it's vital that midwives and parents know the key signs of late onset group B strep infections and know and ha are confident to escalate if they're concerned that their baby has a group B strep infection. And they may well, I mean, midwives will be looking after a lot of these families when the infections develop. So the midwife's role is absolutely key. Um, early treatment with antibiotics is vital. It saves lives. So there's a fair amount of research about group B strep itself. We wanted at GBSS to find out a little bit more about the impact of these infections on the family. So we conducted um, an online survey, a good old survey monkey, asking parents who'd had a baby diagnosed with early onset group B strep infection a number of questions about their pregnancy through to long after uh, their uh, baby was born. Um, we did, of course, rely on parent or mostly parent, a few carer um, recollection, and we didn't check back with medical records. But what we found we thought was interesting both the timing and the presentation of early onset group B strep infection was actually broadly similar with other published research about the timing and presentation. We found in terms of the outcome for the babies, we, we had slightly more babies dying as a result of group B strep infection and quite a lot more of the babies who recovered with long-term disability. We also found that three quarters of the surviving babies were in hospital for one week or more, a not insignificant amount of time for these families. And almost half were in hospital for two weeks or more. We found that nine out of 10 of the respondents said that they had practical or financial difficulties during their baby's inpatient stay caring for other children, the perennial parking. Um, and actually four themes, when we analyzed and looked at the, at the um, open responses, four themes came out quite clearly. Uh, practical, emotional, financial, and health difficulties were the sort of four strands. And these were often interrelated. So you'd have... Um, practical difficulties about caring for other children spilled over into emotional difficulties with, for example, that child um, bonding and attachment issues. So these new mums, most of these yeah, early onset group B strep infections would have occurred in the first day or so of life, were, some of them were facing their own his, uh, health issues, were actually having to juggle their and their baby's health 
at a really vulnerable uh, time in their lives. And we found that the difficulties didn't stop once the babies got home. Almost three quarters of the respondents said there was an impact on their or their family's mental health. Over three quarters said that their baby's early onset group B strep infection negatively impact both either the planning of or the enjoyment of another pregnancy. And, and the stories we read were heartbreaking. Families who said, no, I can't go through that again. I'm not having another baby. Families who delayed their next pregnancy massively um, because of the emotional impact of their baby's, emotional and physical impact of their baby's group B strep infection. Almost a third of, the, of those who had other children um, said that those siblings experienced difficulties as a result of their uh, younger baby, brother or sister's group B strep infection. And a quarter reported financial difficulties. So the, the apparent harms of a group B strep infection actually are the tip of the iceberg. There are a whole load of relatively hidden harms. So how can we prevent this happening? Well, we know uh, that most group B strep infections in newborn babies can be prevented by giving mums who are carrying group B strep IV antibiotics in labour. And I'm going from this point on to refer to intrapartum antimicrobial prophylaxis as IAP for obvious reasons. I got it right first time. I can't guarantee I'll get it right every time. Um, so there are some differences around the world in how women are selected to be offered the uh, IAP. Most developed countries will screen women late in pregnancy to find out if they're carrying group B strep. In the UK, since 2003, we followed a risk-based approach. Um, and the RCOG published their first risk-based approach back in 2003, and they, they've just published an update. Uh, if you haven't been to our stand, do pick up a copy of the uh, summary of their updated guidelines, because uh, there's been really some major changes to it. So, what does it say? Well, it recommends that women should be offered IAP if a previous baby had a group B strep infection, uh, if um, group B strep has been detected any way, any shape, any how during the current pregnancy, uh, and also if mum has a fever in labour. The two new recommendations are that anti, the IAP should be uh, recommended, it's the only recommend, uh, recommendation, uh, recommended in labour if mum is in preterm labour. And mums should also be offered the option of either IAP or testing for group B strep if they carried group B strep in, in the previous pregnancy. There's been a change in some of the antibiotics that are used. Penicillin G is still the, uh, the drug of choice, but where women are allergic to penicillin, clindamycin is no longer recommended. That has been recommended for years as the alternative to penicillin. Now, history taking will be really important um, because the, whether it's, uh, uh, which antibiotic is offered to penicillin allergic women will depend on their level of allergy. And there are new recommendations uh, too. I'm not going to read all through them, um, but one of them that's absolutely key is we have a recommendation now that all pregnant women, all pregnant women, should be provided with an information leaflet about group B strep. Um, I'm partly surprised it's taken till 2017 to get to that recommendation, but I absolutely welcome it. And then we, and we worked with the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists to co-write a suitable information leaflet. Again, if you haven't picked one up, do before you go. Um, there were also uh, new recommendations uh, about for women who tested positive for group B strep in the last pregnancy and the baby was well. Um, whereas in the past, the guideline has said, well, we treat that woman as unknown status in subsequent pregnancies. 
now the recommendation is that we should be discussing with that woman whether she wants IAP regardless or whether we should offer her a test for group B strep late in pregnancy and then the offer of IAP be guided uh, by that test. And the benefit of that particularly is that if you are testing women, around about 50% of women will be carrying group B strep in their next pregnancy if they carried it in the early pregnancy. So if you're testing women, it means that 50% won't be carrying group B strep and antibiotics won't need to be offered to those women. Um, anyone here had uh, any women come to them and say they've tested privately? Yeah, excellent. So, uh, yeah, good, that, that helps um, because the test that is recommended by the RCOG for, women, for testing women at 35 to 37 weeks is exactly that same test, I mean, done within the NHS, uh, but it's the same methodology as the, many of the private laboratories use. So it's a low vaginal and a rectal swab, not a high vaginal. You need to take samples from both the low vagina and the rectum in order to pick up as much growth of group B strep as you can. Those samples are then sent to the laboratory. They're cultured in an enrichment broth and then transferred onto an agar plate. And that is the best way we currently have of detecting group B strep carriage. Uh, often referred to, referred to in the UK as the ECM test, uh, although in most developed countries they just call it the group B strep test. And it's important to remember that the ECM test, whether the result is positive or negative, the result of that test is hugely predictive for the next five weeks. So if you are testing a woman, um, then the, the result, uh, the, the best time to try and do the test uh, is within that, those last five weeks of pregnancy. Um, many developed countries, they do it at 35 to 37 weeks of pregnancy as a proxy. I mean, clearly, if you've got someone expecting twins, you might want to do it a little bit earlier than that. Um, and there are also new guidelines in the RCOG, new recommendations about what should happen after birth, um, both where mum has had antibiotics where mum maybe should have had antibiotics or should have been offered antibiotics and for whatever reason didn't, and clearly uh, where there are concerns that there are uh, signs of infection in the baby. If properly implemented, the updated guidelines, RCOG guidelines, will, I absolutely believe, mean we will start to see what has been an inexorable rise in the rate of early onset group B strep infections in the UK start to fall. And this is absolutely vital because our rate has increased since the guidelines were first introduced in 2003. So we desperately need um, that line to go down. In countries that screen, the, their rates have fallen by, by between 71% in France to 86%. And in London, um, at Northwick Park, uh, there was a pilot of screening a few years ago, and they found in Northwick Park that the rate fell by 80%. And when they stopped doing the test, uh, the screening pilot, the rate went right back up. And this graph is data from the US showing the rate of early onset group B strep infection. Um, and as you can see, it's fallen dramatically. I'm not going to go in the detail of it. I'll happily go uh, through it if anybody wants more information. But this is just to give you a picture. That's the rate in the US of all group B, early onset group B strep infections. That is the rate of voluntary reported. In the US, it's mandatory reported. In the UK, voluntary. And this is just of bacteremia. So it's not even of all cases of early onset group B strep infection. This is why it's so important that we do better at preventing. So what do women want? Well, we did a survey last summer uh, with Bounty, and we found out overwhelmingly that women want to be told about group B strep, so that's supporting the recommendation of the RCOG. They want the opportunity to be 
tested and they want to be told of the opportunity to test privately uh, if it's not available on the NHS. And actually, that wanting to be told the opportunity to be able to test privately uh, was the same whether or not women said they could afford to test privately. Even where they said they couldn't, they still wanted to be told that was an option. We found that two-thirds of women want more information about Group B strep, and this is where the new patient information leaflet will be so important at meeting that need. And midwives... You guys play such an important role here. Is anyone doing the survey, or we finished that now? The, the questions to win prizes? I think we've done that now. So um, it's because I was going to give you the answer, what the answer, the group B strep answer. So um, uh, the survey found that only 11% of women said they first heard about group B strep from a midwife. And yet, it, they, the survey also found that almost 50% will go to their midwife for more information when they found out about it. So midwives are going to have to be really well informed themselves about group B strep. And you will know this, midwives see, uh, uh, pregnant women, new and expectant parents look to midwives as such, so important um, in helping them to make decisions around pregnancy. And this is just confirming that where Group B strep is concerned. And I'm not saying it's easy. Um, you know, there are challenges um, for midwives. So when are you going to talk about Group B strep with pregnant women? Is it a booking? Is it 28 weeks? I don't have the answers. But it's something that each trust and each midwife will need to think about. Does it have to be scary? Uh, we have people say to us that, well, we don't want to tell midwife, or we, we don't want to talk to women about it because it's scary. And that's all to do with how we present. So if we say to women, oh, there's this scary bacterium that can kill your baby, yes, of course, that's terrifying. Um, and we've heard women who've been told that. But if you say it's a common bacterium, and if we know about it, we can put into place really good, effective, preventative medicine, it doesn't have to be scary. There may be sensitivities about discussing tests that aren't available within the NHS. Um, and even though the RCOG guidelines are hugely better than they've ever been, they are still a little confusing um, I think that's not outrageous to say. Um, and they're a little inconsistent too, because we're saying, if you happen to find group B strep during the current pregnancy, then you should be offering mum IV antibiotics in labour. If she happened to test positive last pregnancy and all was well, ooh, we should be testing that woman. But actually, what if it's her first pregnancy? And what if she hasn't tested because she hasn't heard about it? Surely the most logical thing would either be to ignore group B strep completely, and clearly I'm not advocating that, or we should be at least telling pregnant women about group B strep, offering them the opportunity, all of them, the opportunity to be tested, um, and then offering antibiotics to those who test positive if that's what they want. Because at the end of the day, what we all want is women to be able to make an informed choice about what's best for them and their babies. Uh, there is better prevention on the horizon. Uh, researchers around the world are working on developing a vaccine, a maternal vaccine, that one day will prevent not only early onset group B strep infection, but also have the potential to prevent stillbirths, preterm labour, late onset group B strep infection, maternal group B strep infections that just can't be touched by IAP at the moment. Um, should be cost effective, should be available in the next five to ten years. Um, I started the charity in 1996, uh, it's 22 years ago, and 22 years ago I was told a vaccine was 10 to 15 years away. 
I don't think it's, I'm hoping it's five to 10 years away, but you might understand my slight concern about that number. Um, and it's encouraging. Um, the bounty research and indeed other research has shown that women are saying that they would have a, a group B strap vaccine when it's available. I mean, when there are all those provisos about it being safe and effective. And it's so important because the impact of group B strep infection is huge. This lovely family who've uh, given me permission to share their story, um, first pregnancy, everything was fine, n no risk factors, nothing. Um, Edward was born really ill with group B strep infection and he died nine days later. The first time this family heard about group B strep was when they were told that was what was causing Edward's severe infection. So to conclude, we heard the applause next door, so I'm coming into land. Um, group B strep infection in babies have been increasing. The revised RCOG guidelines are a major step forward, but they need to be properly implemented to have any hope. There's no good than being on the website, but for them to be, uh, have any hope of reducing these infections. But even improved as they are, risk-based prevention is confusing and complex. It's not binary like screening. Midwives, you pay, play a hugely important role. You will be absolutely at the coalface of providing women with information and listening to them, hearing their questions and answering those questions. And you will be at the coalface of ensuring the successful implementation of the new guidelines. We at Group B Strep Support absolutely believe that all pregnant women should be informed about Group B Strep and offered testing. Um, and this is because what we all want at the end of the day is healthy mum, healthy baby. So my last slide is some take-home messages. The latest RCOG guidance is important. Um, my lovely assistants here will happily give you copies of the summary and the latest patient information leaflet if you haven't already got it. But regardless, go to that website and you can download the full RCOG guide. Um, um, RCOG guideline. It's 26 pages, but yeah, I would say this. It is worth reading, please. Um, uh, don't just rely on the summary. The patient information, you know, download it, pass it on to the women in your care. Uh, we're working hard at GBSS to be able to fund providing copies of the patient information leaflet to all NHS trusts. So talk to your NHS trust not only about what it's doing in the light of the updated guidelines to update its own trust guidelines, but also what it's doing about providing information about Group B Strat. And give us a call. We're happy to send out more information. And for women who want to be tested and don't qualify within the, uh, the current guidelines, ping them to our website. Uh, we list on our website organisations that we know follow Public Health England guidelines on how to test for Group B strep. If they don't use that methodology, they don't make it to our website. We are always really anxious that women get the best possible information about Group B strep, and if they're going to test for it, they use the right organisations. Your attention has been amazing. Thank you so much. Any questions? Oh, thank you.